Morning, Maisha. Good morning, everyone. We'll give it another minute or two while everyone, uh, some more stragglers pop in, and then we'll, we'll get started. Good morning. Good morning, Brian. Good morning, everyone. All right. Well, let's get some cameras on. Everyone's off today. Just me and Lance. Come on. Pop some cameras on. Heath, what's going on? Not much, mm -hmm. man. Just uh just thankful to be here. Yeah, yeah. Welcome, my boy. This is uh this is Heath's first first rev up. Nice. Welcome. The hat. Love it, love it. Don't mind me, my it's the last day for a, that. Little, a little horse today from yelling at the TV yesterday during the game. So, uh, yeah, yeah, All right. Not a not a great game yesterday. It was a lot of fun though. So, step in the right direction. Definitely. We saw Christian McCaffrey have an amazing game with the 49ers yesterday, doing what he does. That was fun. All right, so we'll, we'll wait to get these last couple of cameras on and we'll get started. Um, today's going to be a pretty, pretty quick and easy one. Um, it is the offer to purchase. Um, has anyone or everyone in here put in an offer to purchase before yet? No. no. Not yet. Oh man. All right. All right. Well, let me share my screen. <clears throat> All right. So this is rev up number five. Welcome. This is the uh, residential offer purchase. Kind of direct a, a detailed review of, of putting in an offer, uh, which you guys will hopefully be doing lots of. Um, I'm a lot more on the listing side, so I, I receive a lot of these. Um, I, I receive a lot more than, than I write up. Um, but um, no matter what side you're on, you need to be able to, to figure out how to, how to read these offer purchases and figure out what's best for your client. So, um, Got our daily affirmation. Uh, money flows to me freely and easily from expected and unexpected sources. All right. So 
I'm sure you guys have all seen a lot of this paperwork, but we're going to go over the, the buyer agency agreement, um, which hopefully you guys will be signing uh, a lot of those. Uh, the offer to purchase contract, um, which is what gets you guys into escrow. Um, contingencies, um, seller disclosures, counter offers, and multiple counter offers. So these are all the fun things that you get to deal with while you are working with your clients. Um, I currently have a situation where we've put in about six offers on the same house. <laughs> My clients wanted to lowball them to start with, which I highly recommended they not do. And the seller never even responded, which is not uncommon, right? Uh, if you send someone an offer that's kind of, uh, it's, it's, it's kind of rude almost to send an offer. I think, I think our initial offer was 70 grand less, um, in today's market. And the, you know, you, you, as a, as a listing agent, you should respond to every single offer. You should acknowledge every single offer. And that should be one of the first things that you guys do. The second that you guys get an offer, you need to send an email responding right back to that received. Thank you. Right. Um, you always want to make sure that you have a paper trail that you are receiving these and then you're acknowledging it. And then what do we have to do with every single offer that we get? Maisha. Present it to the seller. Sorry, say again. Present it to the seller. Yeah. Um, well, the buyer. Yeah. So we've got to present every single offer that we get, whether whether we like the offer or not, um, whether we know that the seller is going to say no to the offer. Uh, we we have to present every single one to them. Um, that can get us in trouble if we don't. I mean, there's there's times you guys are going to have. Um, a listing and get six or seven offers and the, the the last four are not even worth discussing maybe in your mind but you still need to make sure that you're presenting that to them uh because you can you can get in trouble if you're if you're not so you always want to have a paper trail to every single person that receives an offer that you receive an offer from and then just make sure that you're um you know at, at, at least you know verbally explain to yourself hey we got four offers today one's 250 one's 255 one's 265 and then we have the one for 280 and 290, right? And let's let's talk about those. Um, but make sure that you're doing that with, with every single one. So um so yes, and in my situation, we are finally up to uh almost full price now. <laughs> They've come from two seven or um from 170 to almost 245. Uh the original price was 240, uh 249.9. So We've come a long way. We've changed our offer numerous times, and now we're in a situation where we're doing counter offers. So we're we're in this step right here, countering offers and and asking for seller credits and things like that. So um, it's been a lot of a lot of paperwork for not getting an escrow yet, but that is that is part of the part of the process. Um, Again, under additional provisions, uh, there's a few different things. Uh, and then under seller disclosures, residential property disclosures, lead paint, uh, lead-based paint, and um, mineral oil and gas. Um, <clears throat> does anybody know where you're going to find these seller disclosures at when you're putting in an offer? On the MLS? Yep. Yep. Um, <clears throat> So when you guys, and I'll, I'll pull one up here in just a minute. I'll, I'll pull that actual house up here in just a minute and we'll take a look at, at the different things. Um, but yeah, so when you guys are putting up an offer to purchase, you guys are going to be going into your sky slope, right? You're going to get your, you know, hopefully you've already had, at that point in time, you already have your buyer's agency agreement signed, right? right. You're going to get set up to have your offer to purchase. You're going to start filling that out, but you're also going to want to sign and send over the residential property disclosures and lead-based paint, right? So when you when you have a listing, right, you're you're having them sign a listing agreement. They're signing property disclosures, um, mineral oil, gas, lead-based paint if needed. Um, when do we need lead-based paint? 1978 or less. Yeah. 
Yep. So 1978, if it's older than that, you're going to want to make sure you have lead-based paint. Um, if not, you, you don't need it. Um, so on the listing side, you're going to sign that. And when you have a listing, you're going to upload the, these three documents, the residential property, lead-based paint, mineral oil, gas, to the MLS for that listing. So you're going to, on the buying side, if you're going to put an offer on that property, you're going to download those three from the MLS. And I'll show you where that is. Um, and you're going to send that over with the offer. Um, what else would go over with, with the offer? Lance, you've been quiet today, but you, we're going to send over the offer to purchase. We're going to send over the disclosures. Well, what some list, some listings uh, state in the MLS sheet that uh, they, they want to see uh, an approval letter. Don't submit an offer unless you have an approval letter. Yeah, so you should you should pretty much always send over either your proof of funds uh, or or an approval letter. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much every time. And it you know some some listings will say that in the MLS, but that's just kind of on, on pretty much any offer I'm going to send that over on. Um, because again, if you if if your clients at a stage where they haven't even got it pre-approved, then you might be wasting a lot of time. <laughs> you you might be wasting a lot of time. And believe me, I have done that. Uh, they have told me they have incredible credit and they can get a pre-approved at a snap of fingers. And we've we've gone and seen 13 houses and they want to put an offer in and it comes to find out that they got no monies and no credit to, to do it. So um don't don't waste a lot of your time. So um you'll wanna you'll wanna make sure you have that. Begin reading all of your contracts. Um this is something you should you should always you you should already have done and you you should be doing doing now before you even get to a point where you're gonna put in an offer right because you need to be able to know how to describe it to your seller so I'm gonna share my screen on on the MLS uh, let me get logged into that um, and then we'll so no one in here has put in an offer before. That is wild. All right. We got to change that. We have got to change that. We're going to work on it, Brian. Myself, Maisha, and Roddy, we, uh, we were working open houses this weekend. This past weekend? Yep. Nice. Yeah, Saturday, Saturday and Sunday. Uh, a, a lot of people came in on uh, Friday and Saturday, and shockingly, only two people total came on Sunday. Yeah. Wow. All right. Let me go back to screen screen share. Let me share that. Um, let's go here. So this is so we're in the MLS right now. So again, I, I, I've shown this to you before. I'm just gonna show it to you again. So the the name of this house I'm gonna pull up is it's three eleven Burke. Um, when you guys are searching for things, there's a bunch of different ways you can pull up a property. The easiest way to do it when you're searching for something that's active is just type in the number and then press search. Um, and if it, this one's actually not active anymore, or it would pop up here. Um, they just, they actually just withdrew it. So it's not, it's currently not active. Um, all right, let's try that again. That did not work like I expected. So you see it's in withdrawn status. All right, so this is the property itself. Um, we put in numerous offers as, could you guys see this okay? Somewhat? Yeah. Okay, um, so we put in several offers. The seller got frustrated. They weren't getting offers from anyone else and they couldn't find a place to go. So your your worst nightmare as a listing agent is your your, your seller just says, you know what? I'm not even gonna sell my house anymore. That's what happened to this clients. And the poor listing agent called and was she was in tears. She said, oh, I've worked so hard. I had pictures done. I've done all these showings. I've worked with them for months to get their listing. And now they don't wanna sell the house anymore. So that happens, right? Um, the problem is, is they haven't shown them enough houses to find them somewhere to go. So these people, 
they don't have anywhere to go and they didn't have the offer that they wanted. So they went to their house. Um, so long story short, you know, we changed our offer enough where they are, they have decided to look at houses again. Um, they went and saw a house over the weekend and they think that the seller of this house is going to put an offer on that house. If they do, then they will re make this listing active. And then they said that they would accept our offer. Um, so we will see. So I, I literally just texted her right before I started the Zoom this morning. And hopefully they will be putting an offer on that house and selling their house. So that's real estate. Um, anyways, this is where you're going to find the attachments. So um, <clears throat> when you see those documents here, you'll click on that. This is where you'll see the mineral oil gas. I can click on that. Um, and your buy on a buyer, that's right. You're going to download this from the MLS. And you're going to have your buyer initial all the way down. And then they're going to sign down here. All right. Um, on the oil, mineral, gas, I'll just explain this disclosure. Um, this is basically saying that the property includes everything in the ground that comes with the property, right? Oil, mineral, gas. It hasn't been severed. You haven't sold it to the government or someone else that owns the right to the, the, the minerals or the stream or uh, whatever gold is in the ground underneath. This just says it, it, it has not been severed. So ideally what you want to see and, and what you're going to see 99.9% .9 of the time is either nose all the way down from the seller or like this, no representation, no representation. And then these are all no's. Um, and that's what you're going to see almost every single time. If you see something with a yes, ask your back, right? If you've got yes marks down here, all the way down, either A, there's something funky going on, or B, it was an accident, and they didn't mean to do that. And I, I have seen that, but it, it should almost always be no. Uh, regardless, you're going to have your, your buyer initial each one of these. Seems like a lot. It is a lot, but they have to initial each one. Um, so you're going to... Download that and that's going to come over with the offer. Um, and then your property disclosures. <clears throat> Have you guys seen these much? I'm guessing not. All right. So uh, you're... go ahead, Lance. Oh, uh, no, I was just saying I've seen them before. Gotcha. Okay. Um, so in your, your property disclosures, this is going to kind of tell you what, what is wrong with the house what's not wrong with the house um as as a seller right your job is uh, when you're when you're listing your house when you're a, a listing agent going to get your person to sell their house right you're going to have them fill out a property disclosure and if it's no's that means no there's nothing wrong with the house and this one's pretty much no all the way down right um that's good if you see yeses that means there's, there is something wrong so like this top one is it Something wrong with the roof. If it was a yes right here, then that's not good, right? They're going to have a description of what's wrong with it. Um, this house is in, in great condition. Uh, they've done a great job keeping up with it. If you were to see a house that said no representation all the way down the side, what, what would you think that meant? They're hiding something. Possibly. Who else? I feel the same way. Um, there was a multifamily unit that back in the spring was 500,000. Then, you know, someone put an offer down, they had inspection done, they, they pulled out. Then the property went down to 399, now it's down to about 250. So there, there's, I wouldn't trust them if they have uh, no representation because you should know your property. Definitely, we got a lot of feedback on your mic. We're it's kind of cutting in and out. But yeah, that that could that could possibly be it. anyone else. Carlos, you got anything? Either that, or they want to sell it as is. Possibly, yeah. I would just think there's something that's going on that they don't want to discuss. They don't want to address. What if, what if they've had a tenant in the house and they haven't been in the house in years? That's why you're going to see a lot of their representation, right? What if, what if it's their grandfather's house who just passed away and it just got handed down to them and they live in Arkansas, right? 
there's there's actually a, a decent amount of reasons why you would put no representation. Um, uh, but understand when when on the as a buyer's agent, when you see something that says no representation, you 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 normally want to ask, right? You want to ask that listing agent, like, hey, like just just curious. I, I'm looking at property disclosures before we sign them. It's got no representation all the way down. Why? Right. Um, <clears throat> Lance, to your to what you're mentioning, if if that house had a listed at five hundred thousand, they had no representation all the way down, and they had inspections, it should no longer say no representation, right? You have to up you have to update your property disclosures, right? And if you're on the buying side, you know they had inspections and they've seen those inspections, because there's times on the when you're selling a house. I know we're kind of going down a different path, but these are all things you guys need to know. But if you have a, a, a listing and um, so, you know, a buyer does inspections on it and they back out, you don't always get the inspections, right? Um, <clears throat> and sometimes you don't want them because once you get them, you have to disclose everything, right? Um, so there are times to understand that when, when a buyer's agent sends over the repair addendum, Right. So once you guys are in contract, they've done inspections right before due diligence ends. You know, the, the buyer's agent is going to send over a repair addendum. These are the repairs we want done. And on that repair addendum, there's a box that you can check and it says, are you going to share the inspection or not? Right. Um, sometimes you do. Sometimes you don't want to share it. Um, that's a whole nother discussion. But if it is shared with the listing agent, and the, the seller, then your property disclosure has got to be updated, right? So it should no, it should no longer be be empty. But also understand that just because you know, if you're looking to buy a property and it's had an inspection and it, it, they backed out because of the inspection, just know that that seller might not have seen the inspection, right? So ask them, right? Um, so there's a lot of different reasons it, it may say no representation. Um, ideally what you want to see is no all the way down, right? And when you take a listing, ideally you want to take a listing that says no all the way down. Um, but understand that you, you need to make sure that they, that can get them in trouble. If they're saying no all the way down and the roof leaks, the HVAC doesn't work, there's moisture under the house, like it's not going to be good for, for anybody. Um, and just know if you guys are selling your own house, as a real estate agent, you cannot put no representation all the way down, right? We are held to a, a higher standard. So um, uh, even, even, on a, even on a rental house uh, or a tenant house, I mean, um, you'll see a, a lot of agents. And um, I met with a few last week and she's selling her own house and she, she did a pre-inspection because she wanted to know everything wrong with that house before she even filled this out and put it on the market, right? Uh, so I understand that we are we are held to a a higher standard. So this property disclosure is filled out very well. Uh, there's a lot of times you'll see nothing written in here. I'm known for, for not doing a good job on my property disclosures and just marks over here. So the more you can have it filled out, the better. Um, again, this is no all the way down. Um, there's no HOA, so this isn't uh, applicable. So this this last two pages aren't filled out. They just ex exit out. So you're gonna to wanna to have your buyer sign page one and then initial page two, three, and four um, agreeing to that. Um, so you're gonna to wanna to send that over with, with the offer. Um, let's close this. When we're filling out the offer to purchase, where are you going to find all the information? So this is this is the offer of purchase, right? If you guys have not seen this. This is this is this is the fun stuff, right? Um, so in in SkySlope, you know, you can fill out the information before, and you can pre-populate all this stuff, and it will fill it out for you for the most part. And then you can fill out the the numbers. Um, obviously, your purchase price is the the price of the house, right? Does everybody understand the difference in, in due diligence and earnest money? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. 
Um, Brian, right. can you ex explain it one more time? Because I, I, like North Carolina and South Carolina, there's, is there, there's a little bit of difference, isn't there? Yeah, there's a, there's a big difference in North and South Carolina. So basically as a rule of thumb in North Carolina, you, you pay to get into a contract with due diligence. And in South Carolina, you pay to get out of a contract with due diligence. Um, so in North Carolina, you know, you're going to have your offer here, how much you want to purchase the house for. Let's just say it's 400. Then you're going to put your due diligence money here. That due diligence money goes straight to the seller, right? So when you, when you send an offer to somebody, know that if they accept that offer, you need to have a check ready to hand to that seller, right? How, how soon should you be giving that person that check? Within three days, right? Is it? No, it's not three days. I'm not sure. I, I usually, it's kind of a rule of thumb. I mean, normally within 24 hours. 24. Um, a lot of times, same, same day. Um, and, and some people are super strict on that. I, I had a, a $2 million, $2 million offer that I sent over. And I sent it over to them, to the, the, the selling agent around, I don't know, 9.30 at night. And we negotiated back and forth, settled on a number and accepted around 11 p.m. $2 million offer. And this guy was like, I, I, I need my due diligence check right now. And I was like, bro, you, <laughs> if you think I'm going to drive down to the lake and hand you a check at midnight, you, you have a, you're, you're mistaken. He's like, well, that's how you're supposed to do it. And I was like, well, that's, talk to your client, understand that he understands that he doesn't want you to go at his house at midnight and I'm not going to do that. But the next morning, the first thing we did was, was get him a due diligence check. Um, so I, I, I usually say within 24 hours, it, it needs to be speedy, right? Um, what, what is a due diligence check for? Well, in, in North Carolina, it shows that uh, the buyer is serious. Um, and I guess who, who, who de determines the amount of the due diligence? Is it the seller or the buyer's willing to give up? So the, so the, buyer, the buyer decides to do diligence and earnest money. Um, it's negotiable. I mean, if, if, if I get an offer on one of my houses and the due diligence is 200 bucks, we're probably going to counter that. Um, but it, it is, it is ultimately up to, up to the buyer. So the due diligence is basically, here's a thousand dollars for taking your house off the market is what it is. And it is money that does not come back. Right. If it's, Pretty much no matter what, as a rule of thumb, just assume that if you put due diligence down, you're not getting that money back, which is scary, right? Um, so on a $400,000 house, maybe that due diligence is $5,000, right? You're basically saying, hey, if you accept this, if you accept my offer, I'm going to stroke you a check for five grand and it goes towards the house, right? So you're not, if you end up buying a house, it goes towards it. Um, but if you back off for any reason, any reason, then you, you don't get that money back, right? But it, it's, you know, before COVID, the, the, the due diligence numbers were small. A lot of times only a couple hundred bucks. During COVID, the game has changed and, you know, people are getting so many offers and, you know, it wasn't uncommon to get 20 or 30 offers on your house during the first weekend. And, you know, a lot of times the price can only go so high, right? The difference in the offers was the due diligence fees. And I've seen crazy 30, 40, 50, 60,000 dollars in due diligence, which is crazy because if you end up not buying that house, you just lost that money. Um, I think with the market shifting a little bit, we'll start seeing those due, due diligence fees come down a little bit, which is which is good for buyers. Um, but again, that due diligence fee is is the money that the buyer gives you, gives the seller for taking their house off the market, right? Um, what about earnest money? Where, where does that earnest money go to and what is it for? So I'll just answer that. So the earnest money goes to the attorney, right? Um, that goes straight to the attorney. You want to have that to the attorney normally within three to five days, right? Um, different attorneys want that money different, different ways now. Um, I use McMichael and Gray a lot and they, they can do it um, 
they have an app you can use and and the, your buyer can send them money that way. Um, but a lot of times when you meet up, when you get an offer accepted, you're going to meet up with your meet up with your buyer and get two checks. One check is going to be written out to the seller's name. The other check is going to be written out to the attorney's name. Um, and you're going to drop that check off at the attorney and then hand that check to, to the seller, depending on how they want it. Sometimes they want it in their mailbox or sometimes you're going to meet the agent and they will get it to their, their seller. Um, but those are the two different fees. Um, to Lance's question, there's no set, there's no set number for these. Obviously the higher they are, the, the better your offer looks, but between due diligence and earnest money, as a seller, what do you what do you think the preference is? What would you rather have more of? Due diligence. Yeah. All day. So I mean, if 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 you're trying to fit, if your if your buyer says, hey, I've got five grand, I can divvy up between due diligence and earnest money, putting a little bit more on due diligence is going to look better for your offer, right? Um, however, if you if you think <laughs> there's a good chance that this, you know, if, if they accepted that financing might not go through, <laughs> inspections are going to be rough, then you're, you're kind of risking your buyer's money by putting a lot down there. So it's, it's kind of tricky, right? Um, you know, you have to, it, you know, you guys are the expert, right? So if you advise your buyer to put down 10 grand due diligence on a house that you know has got some issues and there's a chance that the seller might not be willing to play ball and and work with you guys during the repair process, you know, you're kind of gambling with their money. So you have to really read the situation, but yeah. So purchase price, due diligence, earnest money. Um, and this is the, the remaining balance. So if it was 400,000 and you did 5,000 earnest, 5,000 due diligence, 5,000 earnest, then the balance would be 390 down here, right? Um, these are pretty much all left blank, these middle ones. This one, this one, this one, this one, and this one pretty much left blank. So it's just the last one. Um, then you guys are going to sign here. Escrow agent. This is the attorney that's going to be used. Who, who in North Carolina, who picks the attorney? The seller. The seller. The seller. Anyone else? Buyer. The buyer. So in, yeah, so in North Carolina, the, the buyer gets to pick that, oh. right? Um, so when you when you're writing up an offer for your for your buyer, do you have an attorney that you prefer, right? Some some people have a family attorney they've been using for seventy years, and they want to use they want it. There she is. <laughs> hey, um, some people have a family attorney or attorney they they like to use. Um, if if not then I, I use one that I'm comfortable with. And I use, I use them with Michael and Gray a lot because they're super flexible and they're, they're easy to work with. But um, if you don't have an attorney that you, that you know of in the area, or if it's at a, in a, like maybe it's up in Hickory and you don't know anyone, just Google closing attorney in Hickory and find one and put that in there, right? Um, but again, that's, that's up to the buyer. Every now and then on, on the selling side, I might ask them if they would mind using an attorney, but the majority of time that is coming from the buyer. Due diligence period, right? Um, how long should this be and, and what, what is this period? It really depends. Ethan's been super quiet this morning. Um, five days so, or 10 days and it ends at 5 p.m. the whatever day it is. Yeah, so I, I normally do 10 to 14 days. It's, it's, it's kind of it's normal. So understand that this, the settlement date is the day that you close, right? Yeah. All right, so everyone, everyone should know that. So settlement date is, is closing day. Right. Like I, I have a closing this morning. Um, today is closing day. We set it for Halloween for some for some reason. We we're closing on Halloween. Um, but yeah, I've got a closing happening literally right now. Um, my seller signed early on Friday. They've got everything banged out. Uh, the buyer is signing this morning. Uh, it should record by early afternoon and funds will be distributed. 
So on on our offer to purchase for this house that I just sold, uh, it was it was 1031 22 right here, right? Um, the due diligence period is the period that, that your buyer has to do all their due diligence, right? Their home inspection. Maybe it's a septic inspection. Maybe you're doing a well inspection. Maybe they're doing radon testing. Maybe they're doing pest inspection. <clears throat> There's a lot of different inspections you can do. Um, all those need to be done during the due diligence period. Because when you get done with all your inspections, you're going to oftentimes ask for repairs, right? You want to have that negotiated by the end of that due diligence period. Because once that due diligence period is over, you are, you're basically locked in, right? Um, if you get to a point where, say, your due diligence period is October 20th in, in this situation, and my inspector couldn't get out there and had to delay and couldn't get out there to the 20th. What do I need to do? I need to get a due diligence extension, right? Because if not, your buyer is going to be in a lot of trouble if that repair or that inspection comes back and it's got a lot of bad stuff on it because we're not going to be able to ask for inspection or repairs then, right? Um, a little advice, um, and it took me a long time to learn this, but put all this stuff on your calendar right? Put the due diligence period for 123 Main Street, October 20th, 5 p.m. Put that on your calendar and then put a reminder three days prior, right? Because uh, if you don't have all your ducks in a row, by at that point in time, you need to ask for an extension. And understand some sellers don't want to sign an extension, right? So you got to be, you got to be prepared for that stuff. But um, as if you're selling your house, what what do you want this due diligence period to be? What would make your make an offer more attractive? Anybody? Shorter. Shorter. Absolutely. <clears throat> the shorter this due diligence period is, the, the 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 less risk, right? So if you guys see an offer. Uh, and you guys are on the listing side and the settlement date is October 31st and the due diligence period is October 30th. That's a, that's a scary offer, right? If you're 30 days away, because that means they have until the day before to back out and you can't do nothing about it, right? You're going to see offers like that. You need to call that agent and figure out why the heck is that due diligence period so long, right? In my case on this one, we had, I think, a four or five business day due diligence period. It was very quick. Uh, it was it was a very quick due diligence period. Um, they only put a thousand down due diligence, but to come off the market for only four days to make a thousand bucks is not a big risk, right? Because we knew the house was in pretty good shape. So that was super attractive to us. It was cash. Excuse me, and it had a very short due diligence period. So that was that was one of the reasons why we decided to accept that offer was because because of that. So um, but also find out if it's a house that's FHA and it's going to need a bunch of inspections, you know, you might want to make that due diligence period a solid two weeks. Right. Um, obviously, your buyer is initialing the bottom of every one of these pages and you guys are sending over an, an offer. Um, Personal property. This is where you're gonna put what you want Mr. Buyer wants in the house, right? And I would say a lot of times you're not putting anything here, but say you want the washer, dryer, and fridge in here. Um, the offer that I told you that we put in like six offers on that I'm hoping to hear back on today, they have a really nice garage and there's a portable AC unit in that garage. We wrote that in the contract here. Like we want, we want that, right? Um, it's expensive, and I don't know what the sellers plan on doing with it, but we wrote that into the contract that 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 is going to stay with the house. So you can kind of put whatever whatever you need to in here. All right, and you guys should and need to read all the way down 
through here. Um, so this is where you're gonna put what type of offer it is. Is it cash? You would click cash right here. And if it's cash, you're gonna want to send over proof of funds, right? Um, bank statement or a screenshot showing they've got the they've got the monies. Um, and you're gonna want that for yourself too. Um, it, it, it happens to be early in my career. Um, I had a I had a listing, it was a million dollar listing and I had a buyer call off of my yard sign saying they're a cash buyer. And I'm like, oh man, I'm about to dual agent this. I'm about to, you know, I'm very excited. And I never, I never got proof of funds. I did ask them, they're like, yeah, hold on, let me ask the bank. I, a couple of days went by, I never ended up getting the proof of funds. And it came down to like a couple of days before close and I kept asking for it and they never gave it to me. And then it came out that they were getting a settlement so that they are going to have the funds. They're getting a couple million dollars in the settlement. And once they got that settlement check, disappeared off the face of the earth. I don't know, they went to Vegas and got drunk or what happened or found another house that they wanted to buy, but they just they just disappeared off the face of the earth. And that was that was it. Um, but that, that was on me. Uh, because I never I never got those proof of funds. So don't let that happen to you. Um and it, it's not something that should be come off to your buyer as rude to them. Like, hey, look, this this isn't for me, right? This is this is for the the seller, right? They need to see that you have proof of funds, right? Because they're they're going to take their house off the market for you. They just need to know that you have the funds, right? And you don't have to share the exact amount of this in your bank, but you can get a letter from Bank of America saying yes, they have the money to to cover the funds for this house, right? <coughs> if not, then you're going to check here. And you're going to check what type of loan it is. <clears throat> so if it is FHA or VA, you guys are going to need to have an addendum signed for that. Between being a horse from yesterday's game and talking so much this morning, my voice is at its end. Um, if it's conventional, you don't need an addendum. Um, but you need a mark conventional. Uh, if it's FHA or VA, you need to have that addendum signed. Um, that'll be in Skyscope as well. And we can pull that up um, here in just a minute. And I'll show you that that form. Um, does does the buyer have another property to sell? Right. So this is this is a contingency, right? Um, does the buyer need to sell their house? Yes. Um, Put that address and then yes the buyer's property is under contract or it's not under contract is it even listed um understand if you've got a buyer who doesn't have their house listed yet that, that has a house that needs to be sold and is putting in offers educate them and say hey a lot of a lot of people are not going to accept your offer if your house isn't at least on the market right meaning you should be their listing agent and get their house on the market pronto if they want to buy a house, right? Um, a lot of people will accept it if it's at least on the market and active in the MLS, even if it's not under contract yet. Obviously, if the house is on the market and under contract, that offer is a lot more easy to accept, right? Uh, but educate your your buyer like, hey, like this is not a world where you want to find a house of your dreams, put an offer, put due diligence down, get it accepted, and then we start selling your house, right? It's not how it works because your house that you're trying to buy is contingent on you selling your house, right? So you need to make sure that that's done first. Um, so this is this is very important. So when you guys receive an offer, if you're on the listing side, this is huge. You need to make sure that you're looking at this and explaining to your seller, hey, this is a great looking offer. There is a contingency they have to sell the house, right? Um, and on the listing side, when I get an offer and their house hasn't isn't under contract, I'm gonna run comps. I'm gonna look at their house. I wanna see, I wanna see what that listing agent did because. I, I know how I do my comps and I want that to be priced aggressively. And maybe they've got a price 50 grand over and that house might sit for 60 days, right? I don't want to accept that offer. 
that's scary, right? I'd rather take an offer for five grand less that doesn't have this contingency if that's the case, right? So those are all things when you guys start getting offers, which hopefully you guys all start getting offers here or putting in offers very soon that you guys want to look at and, and make more lucrative for, for your offers to, to present. Um, this next one, <clears throat> yes, you've received a copy of the property disclosures. And again, we got that from the MLS, same thing with the oil, mineral oil and gas. You're going to want to download those and send them to your, your buyer right away so you can say that they have received it. Uh, and then they'll also need to sign it, obviously. Again, this is just to get this from the MLS. Typically, sellers own the property for at least a year. You know, I'm going to click this if it's older than 1978. This is a big one. This is what a lot of a lot of people miss, and it gets a lot of people in trouble. Agreement to pay buyer expenses. What else is this known as? Closing costs. Closing costs. Okay. That, yeah, that's good. What what else? Seller concessions. Seller concessions, seller credit. Yeah. So <clears throat> when you're putting in an offer, and a lot of agents don't do this, if you have it, a potential buyer and they're like, hey, Lance, I really want to buy a house. I don't have enough money to cover closing costs. That's fine. We can put in an offer and we get you a seller credit. It'll show up as cash at closing and we can get you in a house, right? So maybe this house is 400,000. Maybe we put in a little over asking or at asking and we ask for 8,000 in seller credit, right? That shows up to, that's 8,000 less than, than my buyer has to pay at closing, right? So one of the biggest things you guys will get from the buyers is I don't have enough money to close or I can't buy a house. I don't know how much it's going to cost. The lender is going to be like, Hey, I ran their, their application that they, they can buy. They just don't have enough money in the bank. And most lenders are not going to be like, can you get them a seller credit? They're going to be like, I have a client right now. When, when you fill out a mortgage application, the lender can see your bank account. I don't know if you know that, but they can be like, Hey, I just checked blah, blah's bank account. He's only got $9,000 in there. All right. Well, how much do you think it's going to take for him to buy this house? So it's probably going to take 15. All right. Well, let me put six grand seller credit in here and he'll be able to buy it. Right. On the flip side, if you guys are selling a house and you see a number here, you need to make sure that you tell your client that there's a seller credit, right? So if this offers for 400,000 with a $6,000 seller credit, Realistically, this is a $394,000 offer, right? Yeah. Right? Which is fine. <laughs> and a lot of a lot of agents will get upset sometimes because they don't understand what a seller credit is. But when I receive an offer that has a seller credit, to me, it's a strong offer because I know that that buyer knows exactly what they need to close, right? They've already done their homework. They need it. They know exactly how much funds they need to close. I might counter it, but you're not gonna wanna counter that, that seller credit because they need that money, right? So if they ask for, they put an offer for 400,000 with $6,000 seller credit. Like, look, I, I get it. You guys need a seller credit. Let's move it up to 406. Then we'll still give you the $6,000 seller credit. So my, my seller still gets the full amount that they want and your, your buyer gets the seller credit they need to close, right? And usually, Usually that's reasonable enough and people accept that, right? Do not overlook this. If you do not present an offer that has a seller credit, you are, you are going to get yelled at a lot because <laughs> there's times where your seller is not going to look on page 10, right? And you can submit an offer that looks like it's great, with it, but it has a $10,000 seller credit and they had no idea. And you get the closing documents a couple of days before and they're like, yeah, I'm not going to sign that and you are going to be in trouble. <laughs> so make sure that you guys check page 10. Home warranty, um, that's up to you guys. Um, a lot of times I'll try to get a home warranty if I'm working with a buyer. Um, I'll click 
you know, one of these options. Um, no home warranty is provided. Obviously, your buyer's not going to get a warranty. Uh, typically, home warranty is around 550 or 600 in today's world for a middle of the pack warranty. Um, and you can just Google home warranties and a million will pop up. Just pick which one you think looks best. Um, but yeah, on the buying side, it, it, it never hurts to ask for, for a warranty, right? That the home warranty is going to protect your, your clients from, from the roof to the floor. I mean, even appliances. If there's, it, it even, it'll even take over appliances, which is awesome. <laughs> All the stuff you guys will obviously need to read. Um, again, if it's FHA, you want to click that here. This is for additional addendums that you're going to have attached. Um, you're going to want to click these and send them over. Uh, but this just lets them know that, hey, there are other addendums that's, that's coming with it. Um, Again, they're going to sign. So when you guys are putting in an offer, please make sure you fill this page out. This is page 15. A lot of times I cannot tell you I get an offer and this is all blank. Do not be a lazy agent and not fill out <laughs> this information. Um, so on if you're the buyer's agent, you're filling out this side. This is your information, right? You know, so the selling firm is you're, you're the buyer's agent. You can click here, acting as individual agent. You'll leave this blank. License, phone, fax number if you have an email. Where are you going to get the other person's information from? Uh, REC. Yeah. The real estate commission. Where else? Oh yeah, you can get off the MLS, right? So if you go, if we just go right back to the MLS. So, so again, this is my information, and I have all my information saved in Skyslope. So this is all. All this is going to populate automatically on this side. On the listing side, it's right here in the MLS. So, Robin's girl I've been working with, Osborne Real Estate Group. So there's. So I'm going to click right here. This is all the information you need: first name, last name. Right, her license number, her phone number, the office address, the office ID, the office license number, all that stuff is right here. Right. Um, make sure you fill that out. When I when I get an offer that doesn't have this filled out, I'm I'm gonna send it back to him. Say, hey, can you can you come finish your offer and send it back to me? I, I don't want to have to do that, right? Um, have all this completely filled out. Acknowledgement of receipts of monies. So this is the listing agent has received the due diligence. The seller has received due diligence. Escrow agent has received earnest money. And again, escrow agent is the attorney, right? When do we sign this? With the offer? No, like when it happens, right? Like, yeah. So when it when it happens. So again, this will be populated already. You're gonna want the seller buyer address number information already on there. But this this page is basically blank. It's not there's no signatures on this when you send it over for an offer, right? Um, it seems weird, but everything else is signed and completely filled out. This page you can go ahead and have the amount in here. So if the due diligence is five grand and five grand, um, you can have those numbers in there. You can have the seller's information, buyer and the address, but you're not gonna sign it and they're not gonna sign it. And the attorney's obviously not gonna sign because they haven't got the deal yet until, until it's been done, right? Um, so on the listing side, right? If, I, it's, if it's my house, right? Once, once the buyer sends me the earnest money and the due diligence check, I'm going, to, I'm going to then sign it and then I'm gonna have my seller sign it. And then I'm gonna send this to the attorney for them to sign. And then you're going to want to send that back to the buyer's agent. As a buyer's agent, you got to stay on top of this. Because if you're not asking for page 16, what's going to happen? And I just saw it happen to one of my agents. Is the sales going to get over? And he's going to be like, all right, where's my monies? 
And we're going to be like, all right, let me just check Sky so make sure all your paperwork's in there. And we're like, all right, everything's in there except for page 16. And guess what you got to do is go back to that listing agent who's on vacation because he just got a big fat check and say, hey, I need you to, I need you to sign that saying that you guys received the due diligence check and you just sell it a sign, sell it in Vegas because he just got a big, big fat check. And then you got to go to the attorney like, hey, I should have asked you to do this. Can you sign this? And then have it done, right? So um, this, keep on, keep on top of this. You're going to want to have this signed right away. Um, usually within the first week. Um, so make, make note of that. But this is, this is very important. Um, when your seller gets a due diligence check, should they cash that check or should they hold on to it? I'll let everyone vote on this one. Cash it, hold on to it. I'm gonna vote hold on to it. Okay. Yeah, same, I'm gonna, I would hold on to it. All right, to yeah. hold on to it. I'm gonna have him hold on to it. All right. I don't see any difference, it's, it's your money. I mean, as long as you received it, it it's cash or check, I, I think it's like, same thing. I'm, this is my opinion. I'm not hundred percent sure, but yeah, you should you should cash it. Okay. Do not do not hold on to it. You need to, you need to tell your seller to put that bank immediately. Yeah. Right. Um, understand that um, if it's financed. Hold on. Hold on one second. All right, that's my that's my seller who's the closing today. He's like, "Where's where's my money?" I'm like it's it's ten a.m. It's, it's, it's all done. By the way, congratulations, Brian. No, oh, stop. Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to sign another listing as soon as I leave here. Just gonna get out here. Got to keep that pipeline rolling. And another listing appointment at two. Um, yes, you you want your seller to cash that check right away. On the, on the buyer side, right? So when, when these people are, are getting financed, like everything that comes in and out of their bank account, the, the mortgage company is, is taking a look at that. And the, the mortgage company needs to see that that check that they wrote has been cashed, right? So there, there's been many times where like the, the seller has just not, they've held on to it, which is a bad thing. And it, it disappears. And if it's not cashed before closing, now they've got to avoid that check. They've got to change the HUD. You, you tell your seller, hey, the second you get that, cash that check. And I won't let them sign this until they cashed it. So that's that's what I do. So yeah, so yeah. So uh tricky question, but yes, that is that is your money. That is uh, uh, that is the seller's money they gotta keep. Um who who all is licensed in South Carolina? Okay. Um probably at some point, I mean, depending on how. Good. Uh, depending on how things are going, man, you, you probably will all get eventually licensed in South Carolina. It's right there in Fort Mill, Lake Wiley, like Rock. I mean, it's all right there. There's a ton of money down there. Um, understand in South Carolina due diligence, you only you only pay that if you if you cancel if you if you back out, right? So you don't pay due diligence money up front, and if you don't back out, you never pay that money. Um, I just had this happen to me where I had a buyer in South Carolina. We put an offer and we put $5,000 for the due diligence fee. We didn't have to pay it up front and they never in a million years expected to have to back out. She did not get the job that she thought she was gonna get and we had to back out. And we sent over the termination and we sent over a check for five grand. So that is, uh, you know, that's the difference in South Carolina, North Carolina. So, um, any any questions about the the offer to purchase? Yeah, Brian, a little, little scenario. Um, so, if you, if you accept an offer, the offer comes in, you accept it. You know, they give you a. So we're in North Carolina. They give you a due diligence check. You know, take your house off the market. But can you still, if if you can you still keep it, uh, the house listed for show? Um, 
Can you can you accept their offer on a contingency that you still want to show the house? Because um, they have a contingency that they want to sell their home, but um, there's there's potentially yes, for sure. So you can definitely that might come through. You can definitely accept offers and continue to show. And let me see if we can find something like that in the MLS. Let's just type. Oh, I guess somebody's already in here. So even though they paid you that due diligence, um, would the seller, if they accepted uh, someone else's cash offer, close in 30 days instead of waiting for that contingency for the original um, buyer to you know, sell their home, do they have to pay that due diligence back if they accept someone else's offer? So when you, so for example, right here, you see one that's, these are active. This is coming soon. When it says CS means it's, you, you can't do a showing on it yet. This one's under contract, no show, right? And it's, it says due diligence period, right? Um, so that means this one's under contract. They're not allowing any more showings. Um, let's see if we can find one that has under contract show. So this one, this one is under contract. Um, they are, they are continuing to show the house, right? So in this situation, they can accept backup offers. Um, let's just say they, they accepted an offer for 400,000, but they're continuing to show the house If they get an offer tomorrow for 450 that doesn't mean they can just accept that other offer because they're still in a legal binding contract to, to go to with the first offer right now they can hold that offer as that the other one as a backup offer they can try to find a way to get out of that first offer by not accepting any repairs repair repair requests but they are they're in a legal binding contract with that first offer right um and i can tell you when you when you're on the buying side and you have a buyer, uh, especially in this recent market where you've seen dozens of houses, you put an offer on four or five different houses and you finally got under contract. Think about how you feel as a buyer when you see that the house that you're under contract with is still showing the house. It's not a great feeling, right? Um, so I I typically on the listing side, I, I respectfully tell my, or let my sellers know that, hey, like let's, we're going to take it out to market, right? They gave us due diligence money. We're going to take it out to market. That's a respectful thing to do. Um, that that's how I do it, right? And I've 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 had you know on the been on the buy side and they've continued to show. And your buyers are going to they're going to be crying. They're going to be because you know when you get under contract on a house, I mean you're you're showing your friends. You're going on Zillow. Like, Look at this is the house that I'm buying. And your friends will be like, yeah, it says you can still do showings on it, right? It's 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 going to look offensive, right? Um, so yeah. Um, so yeah, that, great question, but yeah, you, you can continue to show. I don't normally do that. Um, I think I've only done that once. I think I've ever I've done that once ever, uh, is, is to continue to show, but you, you do have that, that option. This is the additional provisions, um, expiration of offer. Um, normally most of your offer is going to be relatively short. Um, this one is also has a rental, that's a rental property. Um, this is the backup contract um, provision. This is the FHA VA addendum. These are all documents you guys are gonna want to download, read them all. Um, I can send these guys, send these to you, um, but you guys need to be able to find these in your sky slope. Um, so if it's FHA, then and you're sending an offer over, and you guys are just going to send over a lot of FHA offers. Um, it's nothing wrong with FHA at all, um, but make sure that you click that this is FHA. And they have to to assign the the seller has to sign that they know that this is an FHA offer. And again, if it's lead lead based paint um, on the seller side, you're gonna they're gonna click this this lower box here, this lower box here, and initial. Um, that it, there's no lead paint, and then your buyer will initial mall and sign. And as a listing agent, you would sign here and sign as well. 
Um, so those are kind of the additional, additional Brian, so, so all the forms we will find in Sky's lab. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So they'll, they'll all be in there. Um, so if you have a, in your buyer's template, all that, all those additional denims will be in the buyer's template because those are the things that you'll send over on a, on an offer. So understand on the listing side, on the listing side, you'll, you'll put up, for example, like this one, this one says that they're accepting proposed financing cash and conventional. So if, if I saw this listing, I wouldn't send over an FHA offer unless I called the, the, the listing agent and said, why, why aren't you accepting FHA? Do you not think it'll go through FHA? Um, so on the, on the, on the selling side, you don't have to worry about any of those addendums, but on the buying side, you have to send it over if it's FHA or VA. So yeah, definitely practice, practice writing offers. I mean, it never hurts for you to go into Skyslope and, and put a fake offer in, send it to me. Uh, I'm not going to sign it. I'm just kidding. Um, but yeah, send, send an offer over. Um, I'll take a look at it and, and we'll, we'll discuss it back and forth. Uh, when you guys get an offer for the, for your first couple of offers, send it, send it to somebody, send it to me, send it to, uh, your big, send it, send it to somebody to look over before you send it in real life. Um, never hurts to have second eyes on it. And the same thing on when you, when you guys receive offers for the first couple of times, um, to have someone else take a look at those offers just to make sure that you guys are not missing something. Um, cause you guys want to be able to explain every offer correctly and make it look great. You guys know the, the rev up three calls, three calls a day, three ads a day, three notes a day in your, in your CRM and you guys will be super, super successful. Um, any, any questions about the contracts and putting in offers and any of that kind of logistics? Well, I guess um, if I ever wanted to look back on this live stream, just to look back on any information that you said, where would I find it possibly? We do or put them on our, on our YouTube, um, but I, I, can always, I can always send it to you as well. Okay. Yeah. So you guys will have access to all of these. Thank you. Do, do record these. That's why I normally put a presentable shirt on at least. Um, but yeah, but again, when you guys are going through this, I like don't just blindly, um, I, I know you guys all have mentors. Um, and I'm some of your mentors, I believe, but um, always, always share your stuff with somebody and have them help you write these offers up. Um, I, actually, on the offer that I just told you I sent over, it's it's a mobile home and there's a box on page one that says is this a mobile is there a mobile home on the property and I didn't click it and as soon as I send it over within seconds the listing agent says you didn't even click that box and I was like okay but yeah but I just I mean I do it too and I've sent over a ton of offers so um, you forget stuff all the time so hopefully this was helpful any any other questions. No, no, no. How okay. long it took you to learn all this information? How many, many months or years? <laughs> I mean, it, the, 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 what's crazy is like, it's different every time. Um, it's different every time. That's, that's the fun about real estate. It's like every offer is the same, but every offer is different, right? And that's what, that's what keeps it, that's what keeps it entertaining. So, um, and the thing is like the, the forms, the forms change. Actually, the, the form that this sample contract right here, um, that I was showing you guys, it's like, this is last year's is actually slightly different. There's actually a box on this first page that says, is it a, mo is it a mobile home? And um, so I mean, the, the contracts change all the time. They'll probably change again here in January for, for 2023. Um, so th things are always changing, but you just got to know how to, how to read things and just educate your, your buyer or seller. So you're, you're putting yourself in the, the best position to not look a fool, I guess is the best, the best way to say it. Um, yeah, I think, I think that's it for me. Um, you guys don't have any other questions. I hope you guys have a good Monday. Hopefully you guys have lots of real estate stuff to do when you get off this call. Thank you very much for all this, uh, good, great information, Brian. Appreciate it. Thank Thanks, you, Brian. Guys. Thanks guys. Have a good day. Bye. Thank you. Happy Halloween.
Happy Halloween. Thank you. Good luck, everyone. See you next Monday.